when you mess up, that's how you clean it up. For anybody that would want to condemn him for that, how do you condemn him for it if afterwards he comes back and apologizes? What do you want him to do? I saw this on yesterday and then asked about this today. What do I think about what happened at this young brother's church? Now, I'm not sure how old he is. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's, he's, he's a good ways younger than me. Maybe about 10, 20 years younger than me. I'm not sure. Uh, seems to be pretty excited about the Lord. Again, I don't know a lot about his doctrine. hadn't seen enough about him, but it just so happened that um, I was watching something on yesterday. Uh, and this was, I can't remember if this was before I was getting ready for church or after I came back. I think it was before I went to church. Uh, and he was giving an apology. So I didn't even see the sermon, but he was giving an apology about something that he said the previous week, a word that he used. It was like, what word did he use? That, that's the first thing that people were wondering. Well, what, what did you say? Uh, because there was apparently no big, real big hubbub about it the previous week or none that I had seen or heard of. But then again, I, I don't have my ear to the ground. And so I just saw them thinking, well, what in the world was it? What was so bad? But the good thing was he apologized. Whatever it was, he seemed to be broken over. Now, me, I don't put a whole lot of credence into one person's emotional response because sometimes they're genuine, sometimes they're not. But I still want to know what was the big deal that he said and was there really a problem? Are you pleading for your unsafe loved ones for their eyes to be open? Are you pleading for their ears to be? Just listen to the garbage you pray. So this was a sermon entitled Weeds and Fire. I believe the same of it. And he was just talking about the condition of the world, but really about people who are who are supposed to be the weak and how they respond. The, the things that we're worried about, are we really worried about uh, the things of God? And it was kind of, you know, kind of a, a step on your toes, sort of a sermon, check yourself. Uh, kind of, It was impassioned. And then he says, in, says some things in a way that maybe he ought not have said it. What about your money? What are you supporting? You put all this money into your hair and into your house and into your bills and you won't put a dollar into the Lord's work during the hour of redemption? What about your activity? You won't help move gospel ministry forward? You just, you just want to be, you, like, why are you content to just be a spectator during the hour of redemption? What, this, I mean, I'm, I'm out of time. I'm so frustrated. Is it helping you to understand what biblical Christianity is all about? Just listen, just, just listen to the preaching in our nation. Is it preparing you for the harvest that's coming? Is it awakening your soul to what's matter? Like, when's the last time you shed a tear for someone who was far away from God? See, you don't feel that grief because you don't give a darn. You don't give a damn about what God is doing right now. All you want is what you want. And so that was it right there. He said, you don't give a darn. And then he said that, uh, he uses he uses the word D-A-M-N. He didn't use it necessarily in a way that you probably ought to, but you hear it. So was he wrong for that? Well, uh, that could be offensive to someone. And so you want to you want to be careful how you speak before the people. As a matter of fact, Paul says this, says, let your speech always be with grace as though seasoned with salt so that you will know how you should respond to each person. So it matters what we say, but it also matters how we say it. Now, that probably wouldn't have been so bad, but then he kind of, no, not kind of, he says it again. You are a useless wheat planted with no purpose because you won't engage in what Jesus is doing. Ain't nobody else coming behind you. He planted you. He planted me. If we don't do the work in the field, who's going to do that work? If we're not praying, who's going to pray? If we're not advancing the gospel, who's going to do that? If we're not supporting gospel ministry, who's going to do that? If you don't give a damn, who is? Now, what he was saying was, was really spot on, the passion and so forth. Um, but it's the, if you don't give a damn, well, wait a second. Hold on. Wait a second. You have to be careful with what you say. You have to be responsible with what you say. Now, Paul puts it this way. He says, whatever you do, whether you eat or whether you drink, do it all to the glory of God. These are these are seemingly menial things we don't even think about. But he says, give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I also please all men in all things, 
not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many so that they may be saved. So what comes out of your mouth actually matters. Now, in his apology, he just said that was just kind of something that's in his heart, that's still in his heart that he has to he has to work on, which is fine. The, matter of fact, his, I think his apology was was wonderful. They've since taken it down. And so I don't know if there's anywhere where you can see the apology. I didn't think anything about it until I just heard some more stuff about it today. But uh, he apologized for it, which, which was fine. He talked to the people. He seemed to be broken by it, bothered by it. Uh, there was some pushback because I can tell you for a fact that what you say, even if it's something that is small, seemingly harmless, someone's going to give you pushback. If I say, if I call a young lady, um, sweetheart, and I mean nothing by it, someone's going to say, you shouldn't say that. You shouldn't say this. You shouldn't say that. So certainly when he says that, and he should be wise enough to know, I'm certain, I'm, I'm sure he is now, that you can't say certain words, use certain words in certain contexts before certain people, because everybody doesn't have the same heart or the same understanding or the same feeling. Some folks feel a certain way. And you've got to remember, you just can't use words that just can conjure up some sort of um, profanity or not that what he said was profane or anything like that. I think what he said was spot on, but it's just a choice of words. And you have to be careful about that. So I think a lot of this probably is overblown. More and more folks are talking about it. I don't I just don't think that it's that big a deal, but it does give a an opportunity to learn something. That is, you don't just say what you want to say because you want to say it. It's not your style. That's important. It's not your tone. That's important. It's not your uh, preferences that are important. What it is, is the people. And if your preference, your style, your tone is more important than the people that are hearing it, well, then you need to stop speaking. Because what comes out of the mouth comes from the heart. And if there's something there and you don't care, I can understand if it came out and, well, this is who I am, then we have a problem. But at least with him, it came out and he didn't just give an, uh, an excuse. Well, this is who I am. Take it or leave it. This is how we talk. No, he apologized, which is what you should do. Again, he's not perfect. He's not pretending to be perfect. He's not saying, well, listen, I said it the way I wanted to say it. I wanted, I wanted for cause and effect. No, he apologized because some folks were offended by it. That just shows maturity. Uh, it might have been a, maybe a lapse in judgment in the word that was used earlier. But then certainly sound judgment to come back and say, yeah, guys, I was wrong for that. I apologize. Forgive me. And then you keep on moving for anybody that would want to condemn him for that. How do you condemn him for it if afterwards he comes back and apologize? What do you want him to do? You want him to step down forever? You want him to quit? Now, if there's other issues with him, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know a lot about his doctrine. I just now figured out his name. He's got three first names. And so I've been calling him the wrong name all this time. But what he did was what a person, not a pastor, but a person who names the name of Christ, what a person should do. And that's what, and he sets an example for anyone that says something. Sometimes you might even say something that is not even worthy of offense, but someone, because they're always looking for something, might take it to be offensive. And so what do you do? I apologize. If I could fix it next time, I will. Uh, I'll try to explain my heart. If what you did wasn't a sin, or maybe it was. This is what the word tells us, that if eating meat offends your brother, not that meat is wrong and eating meat is wrong, but if it offends your brother, then guess what? Don't do it in front of them, considering the weaker person. And that's what you're supposed to do. Anyone with a heart for the people, anyone with a pastor, with a pastor's heart, or anyone with just a loving heart, a concerned heart, would do the exact same thing. So I applaud the young brother for this. I shouldn't say young brother. I don't know how old he is. <laughs> I stopped saying that. Um, but I applaud this brother for what he's done. What he, I thought what he said was fine also. I uh, haven't heard that. I think that was the only sermon I've heard thus far that he has preached. I didn't catch all of it, but I caught a, a good deal amount of it. And so, hey, hey amen. Kudos, kudos to him and kudos for him to see that, hey, even if you mess up, how you come back and fix it. Amen. Amen.